Good afternoon and welcome to the Committee on Higher Education jointly with the Committee on Labor and Technology. Uh, it is 3.03 p.m. and we are in room um, <clears throat> 229. Today is Valentine's Day, February 14. So happy Valentine's to everyone out there. Yeah, we're in red. Yes. <laughs> a lot of reds today. If you're in red, you can testify. If you're not, <laughs> uh, to my right is the chair of the Committee on Labor and Technology. Um, Senator Moriwaki, to my left is the Vice Chair, Senator Kidani, and member of both committees is Senator Gil Keith Agaran. And the meeting is being streamed live on YouTube in a likely event. We must abruptly end this hearing due to technical difficulties. Committee will reconvene to discuss any outstanding business at 3 p.m. in room 229, and a public notice will be posted on the legislature's website. Uh, for those of you who are participating remotely, your audio will be muted and video disabled until shortly before it's your turn to testify. Testifiers will be limited to two, two minutes each. At the end of two minutes, the audio will be automatically muted. If there are any temporary glitches during your turn to testify, we may have to move on to the next person due to time, time constraints. We appreciate your understanding and remind you that the committee has your written testimony. Um, with that, we will start with our first agenda item, a three o'clock agenda. That is Senate Bill 1415. This is relating to the University of Hawaii, requires the University of Hawaii to submit annual reports of all university employees who perform work from a location outside the state of Hawaii during an applicable year to the legislature, legislature no later than December 31st of that year. And we have Candace Park from the Deputy of Attorney General here with comments. Oh, you're in person. Nice to see you, Candace. Thank you. Chair Kim, Chair Moriaki, Vice Chair Kidani, members of the committee. Uh, the department would just like to point out that um, the bill needs to have the statewide concern language. Thank you. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, <clears throat> Jan Govea, that's by University of Hawaii. Not here. Um, let's see. We have actually 64. There are 63 other testifiers there, and uh, let's see, they're all in support except one. That's great. Um, anyone here wishing to testify on this measure that didn't sign up or signed up, and I'm not going to read all 64 names? Not anybody on Zoom? Hearing none on Zoom. Members, any questions? Any comments? Hearing none? We are going to use this. Call the joint committee back to order. We are on decision making for Senate Bill 1415. Uh, the recommendations from the chairs are to pass with amendments to include Article 10, Section 6 of the Hawaii State Constitution uh, that uh, has a requisite for statewide concern and any other uh, non, -sub non substantive and technical amendments. Any discussion, members? Hearing none, chair votes aye. Senate Bill 1415 to pass with amendments. Chair votes aye. Senator Kibani votes aye. Senator Kitanaga excused. Senator Kitagaran? Yes. Senator Kijara excused. Thank you. The same recommendation for the Labor and Technology Committee. Chair votes aye. Voting on Senate Bill 1415, recommendations to pass with amendments, noting excused absence of Senators Ihara and Favela. Are there any reservations or no's? If not, recommendations adopted. And that is your to call to order the Committee on Higher Education jointly <coughs> with the Committee on Agriculture and the Environment. Uh, it is 3.07 uh, p.m. agenda. We're in room 229. And today is Tuesday, February 14th. Then I've already read the announcements. 
Uh, I'm not going to read it again, starting with Senate Bill 1586. <clears throat> this is relating to the University of Hawaii College of Tropical Resource, Tropical Agriculture and Human Resources. It appropriates funds to the University of Hawaii to establish five full-time equivalent extension specialist agent positions at the College of Tropical Ag Agriculture and Human Resources. Um, we have testifying first up is the Environmental Health Administration, um, testifying for the department, anyone here? Yes, please come on. I'm going to help you. I'm testifying on behalf of Sita. Okay. Thank um, you. Yes. Aloha, Chair, Vice Chairs, rest of the committee, Anya Vitorek, uh, Intern Dean for College of Tropical Agriculture and Human Resources. Uh, thank you for providing me this opportunity to uh, testify in support of the bill. And we have a few amendments that we would like to uh, uh, include. And these amendments are. Uh, in my written testimony. Um, I just wanted to kind of add that you all know that CITAR is the land grant college at the University of Hawaii. We are carrying the land grant mission and part of our mission is to, of course, to make sure that we can address all the improve the life of the stakeholders and people of Hawaii. And we do that through extension research and extension. And uh, Right now, CTAR only has 30 extension agents that serve entire uh, state of Hawaii. Five of them we are right now supporting through the soft money, through the grants, because uh, these positions are not permanent. And out of these 30 extension agents, five of them actually specifically work with uh, our youth for age programs. So only 25 of these extension agents are here to really uh, help our farmers and, uh, and and our stakeholders in uh, when it comes to the agriculture. And for that reason, uh, we are strongly supporting uh, this bill. And of course, as long as it does not have a negative impact of Board of Region approved budget. Thank you. And I'm here to answer any questions. Okay. Thank you very much. <coughs> Okay, uh, let's see, do we have anyone here from the Department of Environmental Health to testify? Okay, uh, let's see, University of Hawaii, Christopher Schuler, Thomas Giambellico. at the uh, whole University of Hawaii. Hold on, show me. We are called back to order. Apologize for the confusion. Too many agendas on our on our dockets. So we are on 1586, correct? Relating to University of Hawaii College of Ag Tropical Agriculture. And I said that we have got five positions. So Anna uh, Weiserek, that's already testified, right? Thank you. Brian Miyamoto for the Farm Bureau. I thought I saw Brian in here. Also. Okay, in support. Uh, John Morgan, testifying for Kulo Ranch in support. Nicole Galassi, testifying for the Cattlemen's Council in support on Zoom. There you are. Aloha. Thank you, Chair Kim, Chair Gabbard, Vice Chair Skidani, and Richards. I'm Nicole Galassi, um, representing the Hawaii Cattlemen's Council. We stand on our testimony in strong support as extension agents really are key to making sure best practices get to our ranchers and farmers on the ground and vice versa, that the university knows what needs to be researched. Um, I thank you for the opportunity to testify. I also do wanna note our um, support for SB 1488, which I most likely won't be able to be here for. Thank you. Thank you. Let's 
the Scott Enright in support, Michael Munekata for Ulupono Initiative, in support, Christian Fern testifying to Ufa. Uh, uh, HDA staff in session. Thank you. And we have, let's see, 16, 18, eight others um, all testifying in support. Anyone here wishing to testify on this measure? Anyone on Zoom wishing to testify? If not, okay, then we move on to the next time. Next question. Oh, questions, okay. members. Um, first, CTAR. Mm -hmm. So, um, Anna, what, what would a five, these five new um, extension specialists do? So, uh, three of these positions are specifically for the livestock. Uh, one is, uh, one of the livestock is going to be the statewide specialist that is going to be based in Manoa and travel to all the islands. Uh, the other one is uh, livestock to be based in Kauai, on Kauai County. And the third one, livestock is in Hilo. Uh, other two positions, one the position is to work with a uh, GAP program and the food safety, and the last one is entomologist to work in Hilo. How, how come you guys know one livestock person on Molokai being the, the situation that it is? Um, so the, on Molokai, Molokai is actually serviced by our Maui County. No, I, I know that, but you guys challenges is that when there's an issue there, you guys cannot get on flight like mm -hmm. every other position that has been removed from Molokai. Mm -hmm. If it, if there is an issue, you guys wait for two or three days. By then, that issue has already been um, moved or taken over by whether it be pests, disease, mm -hmm. or the infection has already been done. So you guys showing up late to the party. Uh, well, thank you for your comment. I understand your concerns. Um, as if we can address this, we will, but right now we are very short on the positions. Uh, CTAR has lost almost one third of our college uh, through pandemic. And these five positions are the five positions that have been identified by our stakeholders that they believe that they are the highest need that they would like us to address. So I thank you for your comments and we will. Uh, try to. So, so, so the reason I ask is because your stakeholders are also there, yeah, mm -hmm. with livestock. Yes. And you guys have a big problem right now with livestock yes. there. Mm -hmm. So, would it be in the best interest if you put the livestock person on Molokai? And if you get problems on Maui, then you go and answer the questions there? The, the, so, uh, the specialist that is supposed to be on Maui, it's a actually extension specialist that has a free way split. That means that this person has to do instruction, extension, and research. And uh, this position is also crucial that extension, that research, sorry, the instruction part is extremely crucial to our education program in animal science. So we need that person to be at least partially on, uh, on Oahu so it can work with our animal, animal science students. This is one of the quickest growing program at CTAR. So, uh, but this is a state-wide uh, position, so uh, there is no doubt that this person will be able to travel to Molokai if needed. Okay, I'll be watching. Thank, Thank you. you. I have a question. Mm -hmm. How many, do you have any vacant positions? Uh, so we have a very few handful of the vacant positions that we are even advertising right now, waiting for uh, official permission to for the official approval for exception from no hiring freeze. And one of them has just become available and we will be hiring it as soon as we can. So can, you, can the department and the CTAR um, send in what, um, what positions are vacant? Yes, of course. Which was your, your um, recruits? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Members, any other questions? Uh, Anna, how many farms does, on average is each uh, extension specialist? assist in each of the counties just to give an idea um, so our uh, it depends on the position right so like for example when we talk for example when we're talking about uh, extension agents that works with for example coffee uh, we have only one extension agent that is for example on big island and she has to carry uh, cover all the farms so uh, it depends 
Uh, but lots of our extension agents right now uh, we're covering entire state because we are so short in 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 the extension agent uh, staffing. And with your vacancy, uh, the vacancies, do you have any idea how many farmers were not served in the past three years? Uh, that's a that's a difficult question to answer because even that we are uh, short on, on on positions, our extension agents do absolutely best to service as many farmers as possible, even if that requires them to go on the weekends or something. We also are working. We started during the COVID working uh, with our farmers and allowed me and provide some of the programming from for Zoom through Zoom, so we can access more of them uh, quicker. And uh, we continue with that as long as it's needed. So thank you, thank you. Thank you. Any other question? Question. Question, Senator. Um, <coughs> oh yes, no problem. Thank you, Chair. You mentioned the. Uh, a hiring freeze how long has that been? so the hiring freeze uh we had since the COVID started uh it was implemented to make sure that uh, we can respond to the and the hiring freeze is a system-wide uh by the president of university to make sure that we can stay in our budget uh especially when the times were difficult and we didn't know how pandemic is going to impact the, the state budget and then when did the hiring freeze and it hasn't ended yet so we have oh, let me clarify that actually so we have a hiring freeze uh on all g funded position that means state funded positions uh in tuition uh so if we wanted to use tuition funds or if we wanted to use a permanent position we have to ask uh the uh, president for approval to have an exception to high no hiring freeze uh, anything that is used, we use the uh, research direct money, or if we have any other external grants, then we do not need to have that permission. But right now, and that's a system wide. What percentage of freeze? Everything is frozen? I, I am not probably the best person to answer that question because this is a system wide uh, initiated by president. But anything that is G funded, is frozen right now. Uh, we do have opportunity to ask for uh, faculty positions. Uh, we, we, there is call from, uh, at least in Manoa, from the provost that comes once a year. Uh, the deans provide the uh, top priorities. There is the Manoa White, White, Manoa White Committee that evaluates these requests from the deans and the deans uh, will receive uh, positions that were approved by this committee. And we were lucky and thankful that we have received six positions for this academic year. Two of them are extension positions and four are the uh, instruction or research, all mixed because we do have freeway splits. So those six positions are G-funded positions? Yes. So and those were frozen. If, so, uh, so right now we are not allowed freely to hire the uh, faculty or staff on G-funded position, G-funded uh, positions or the uh, tuition money, and we need to have a permission from provost and and president to hire if we wanted to do that and we have to show that there is a huge need but once a year at least for Manoa uh, we are receiving permissions to, to hire the faculty and as I mentioned the CETA has received six faculty position in the fall which were which were which were currently recruiting well I guess we're concerned because the pandemic is over or so it seems that everybody is being called back in and UH has been asking for more positions um, in the budget so you're asking for more positions yet you're, there's a freeze on positions so I guess we're going to have to stay there again. Okay. okay thank you for your comment. Okay moving on to the next Item on the agenda, SB 285, relating to wastewater systems, establishes a three-year 
new waste management solution and cesspool system demonstration pilot program with the new UH water resources research center to examine and demonstrate new wastewater and cesspool technology systems implement those technologies and demonstration projects in areas across the state that are identified as priority level one in the 2021 Hawaii Cesspool Hazard Assessment and Prioritization Tool Report and establish a similar ranking system for prioritization levels for the islands of Molokai, Lanai, and Niihau. Requires uh, UH Water Resources Research Center to submit reports to the ledge. And first up on SB 285 is Department of Health. Good afternoon. My name is Mark Tomomitsu of the Department of Health Wastewater Branch here for Sina Pruder. The Department of Health stands on our written testimony in support. Thank you much. Thank you. Next is UH. Zoom. Hello, uh, my name is Tao Yan. Uh, I'm here on behalf of uh, Chris Schooner. And I'm Associate Director of uh, Water Resources Research Center at the University of Hawaii, and we are in support of SB 285. Thank you. Uh, next is uh, Department of Hawaiian Homelands. And your name, please? Oriana. Oh, yeah. Oriana. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Oriana. Next is Chris Schuler. And Mark <coughs> Hickson. Here in support. Lindsay Garcia from Hawaii Realtors. Also in support, and there were nine more, nine others in support with none in opposition. Members, are there any questions? Yeah, okay. I guess it's Senator, for the university. It's still on. Um, I, I think you're gonna, what's your work plan given the priority areas that were identified earlier, are you going to be able to cover all of the all of those priority areas in the three years of the pilot? So we haven't get to the detail of that. I think it's feasible and uh, uh, really depends on the funding. And, but we believe we have the expertise and if we give you enough resources, we can put it off. Well, do you have a ballpark on depending what what's the ballpark as far as the amount of money that's included? I, I don't have a detailed budget number to discuss at this moment. Well, you've got three million. What can you do? Uh, establish, uh, create a you know, uh, pilot program and that will test uh, the safety and efficacy of the new emerging technologies. And what's important here is to uh, make sure that this uh, technology is not only effective, but also cost effective. Uh, once we have that uh, determined, then uh, we're going to uh, try to support the Hawaii, Hawaii Department of Health in uh, approving, uh, you know, in their processing, approving these uh, uh, safe, effective, and uh, less costly technologies, large scale application. All right. Uh, anyone else? Question for DHHL? Say Oriana, is that right? Yes. Hello, Senator Gabbard. Aloha. So what role does uh, DHHL uh, play in the conversion process? 
We are not party to this bill. However, we are in strong support of this bill because we have approximately 2,500 cesspools on Hawaiian homelands, which totals about 3% of all statewide cesspools. I believe in total, there are approximately 88,000 total. So we are in strong support of the Department of Health as well as the University of Hawaii in reaching success with this uh, requirement. And would DHHL, would you consider an educational role in collaboration with UH in terms of helping the Native Hawaiians, the Hawaiian community? Absolutely. I think education will continue to be a strong factor and component in reaching success with this measure and also the overall objective. Okay. Thank you. Mahalo. All right, moving on. The SB 518 relating to aquaculture requires UHC grant program to contract with an independent consultant to establish a five-year plan to develop goals, objectives, and an operational plan with budgets and timelines to strengthen and grow the aquaculture industry in the state. Okay. And first up is the AG's office. Chair Geiger, wow. Chair Kim, Deputy Attorney General Candace Park, on behalf of the Department of the Attorney General, we'd just like to point out that for this bill, uh, we recommend putting in the language that the matter is a uh, matter of statewide concern. <coughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Brian Miyamoto from Hawaii Farm Bureau in support. Anyone else wishing to testify on this measure? Please. Aloha, Senator Gabbard, uh, Chair Kim, Vice Chair Kidani, and members of the committee. My name is Darren Okimoto, and I serve as the Associate Director and Extension Leader for the University of Hawaii Sea Grant College Program at UH. Our program supports Senate Bill 518 with acceptance of the following recommendations to the committee that the bill's passage does not replace or adversely impact priorities as indicated in the university's border regions approved executive biennium budget. And second, that language pertaining to submission of the plan to the legislature be modified prior to convening of the 2025 legislative session to allow sufficient time to initiate and complete the strategic planning process as evidenced in the companion House Bill 1268. So based on our past experience with legislative appropriations, we have typically received funding in early fall, which would only leave us with a few months to implement the activity. Uh, funding this measure will help the industry to formalize and set clear, clearly defined goals for aquaculture in the state, along with developing a mission and vision that is aligned with the state of Hawaii. Thank you for, again for the opportunity to testify on this measure. Thank you. Anyone else? Members, questions? Yeah, I have a question for you, University of Hawaii. Sure. <clears throat> so you are, folks are in support of this measure, right? With the yes, conditions we are. That you yes, we are. Uh -huh. um, so is this an important um, program for the university, for so, culture? Yeah, so one of the things that's been happening over the past several years is that, you know, we've been able to secure um, NOAA funding to support aquaculture in the state. And so one of the projects that we received funding for was to, to create this Hawaii Aquaculture Collaborative, which is an industry-led initiative that we've convened over, say, 100 plus um, members of the industry, fish pond practitioners, and other related supporting agencies. And so they identified you know, strategic planning as one of the priorities. Uh, and this is a way for them to actually speak as one voice. And so, so they, they voice this as something that's really important for them to do. And, and what we want to do is have them come together, provide their vision, complete the plan, and help to align that with the one that the state of Hawaii is developing at the same time so we can all move in the same direction together. Okay. So then if it's so important, why is it it's not part of the UH's budget? Because you said that you only support this program if it aligns, it doesn't supplant anything that the border regions already pass in their budget. 
So if it does, then this project is not needed? So the request, the request for this bill actually was based on language that's introduced by the industry itself. And so the industry was the one that submitted the, the yes, request, right? Yes, you folks are supporting it, and you just told us that you think this is a really important program to bring everybody together, uh, align, you know, with what you folks are doing. Sure. So if it's that important, how, why is it that, was it even requested to be part of the university's budget? Well, our program actually is um, supported by NOAA, and so we're a federally funded program, and we require, um, Congress requires a 50% matching requirement. And so the way that we support our program's activities is through extramural funding. And so, so one of the things that we're doing is we're trying to raise funding, support this initiative. And so the university doesn't have that funding to support this. This is a new initiative, not yeah, industry Yeah, but they can voice. ask us for it though. They ask us for all kinds of monies for, for initiatives, right? UH. Well, I, I can't speak for the, I'm speaking for my program. Right, but I'm just right. wondering why your program, did your program ask the university for funding to be included part of the budget? The university provides as part of its matching commitment to NOAA for a C grant, they that's provide right. five to four time positions. And so that's the funding that the university provides as part of their matching requirement I, I for understand. the program. I just, so, it just bothers me when you know, everybody comes in, you're not the only one. Well, yeah. we support this as long as it doesn't supplant the budget. And so I'm just wondering if it was so important, then why isn't it part of the budget? And so if it does supplant, we cut something else to give you guys the money, then you don't want it? Well, I'm just, I'm just saying that it's something that the industry is asking. We're asking the state for funding. And if that's something that you folks would consider, then please fund it. So okay. maybe we'll fund this and not fund something else that they're asking. Well, that's your decision. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, there were six uh, in favor and none opposed on that measure. We're moving on to SB 646. Relating to ornamental ginger, appropriates funds for statewide research into ornamental ginger pathogens, prevention of the spread of ornamental ginger pathogens, and production and distribution of pathogen free ornamental ginger plants, and outreach to ornamental producers. First up is uh, Anya Eastberg with CTAR. Aloha Chair, Vice Chair, uh, rest of the committee, thank you for providing the opportunity to testify in support of this bill. As you know, uh, ornamental ginger, ginger is a value crop here in Hawaii. Uh, for last couple of years, they have been, the growers have been dealing with viruses and diseases. And a couple of years ago, uh, CETA faculty actually was able to identify three of these viruses and one of the pathogen. And then also our collaborators identify additional 14 viruses. So uh, in the past, we have, con we, ha we are continue doing research and trying to find the best way to help our growers. And one, I think the most exciting things that our researchers were able to do, we actually were able to identify virus free plants. Uh, and that was not, <laughs> not an easy task because lots of plants are already infected. And then uh, we have worked with our collaborators also to see if we can do tissue culture of that virus free plants and they were successful. So uh, this specifically uh, bill looks into the future to see how we can continue helping our growers uh, to address, excuse me, to address uh, these issues and uh, some of the things, the most important things that if this bill is passed with support, it actually would, first of all, uh, do the research to see how long does it take the virus-free culture plants uh, to, to, to stand up to the virus. The se second thing, if the results are positive from the first experiment, we're going to, of course, uh, work on tissue culture, uh, continue developing large number of tissue culture plants that will be available to the farmers, and also, uh, continue working on the recognize, looking for additional uh, viruses and diseases to make sure that they don't surprise us. And on that, uh, for that reason, I would like to stay in support of this bill, as long as it does not have a negative impact of board of regional yeah, approval. Thank, you, uh, thank you, and I'm here to answer any questions. Thank you. 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 Thank you
Um, <coughs> next is Brian Miyamoto from Hawaii Farm Bureau in support. Russell Galanti. Is Russell with us? Aloha, Russell. Good afternoon, uh, Chair, Vice Chair, and Committee. Thanks for giving me a chance to testify. I am the extension agent uh, faculty that works statewide on the red ginger virus issue. I have been doing so for the past four years. Uh, just to give you a little bit of understanding, we've lost over half the farms that have been producing red ginger since 2014, and that number is continuing to decrease. Uh, we found the viruses across the state. Uh, we found two new viruses completely new to science. Uh, it took a very long time to do that. Uh, the current only accepted solution for something like uh, this widespread of a virus is to produce virus-free plants. They do that practice, for example, for banana, for banana bunchy top. They do this for potato, uh, for producing bacteria-free potato on a larger scale across the world. Uh, so right now, producing virus-free plants is, is really the only accepted solution uh, from the experts. And talking about banana and other crop species, these two new viruses, um, like many of the other viruses, may spread to plants outside of just ornamental ginger. So it would also be important to use this funding to understand whether or not these viruses will affect uh, other plant species as well, some of them uh, larger economic crops. So I am testifying in support of this funding. Thank you. Thank you, Russell. You can stick around for questions. Okay. Thank you. Any other, anyone else want to testify on uh, 646? Through nine and support zero opposed. Members, any questions? I have a question. Senator Fidon. For Anya or Russell, I'm curious as to specifically what is the disease? How do you identify it? Is it something, is it something that people who have ginger plants in the yard will see? Thank you for that question. And I will um, ask the expert, uh, Russell to answer it, if that's okay with. Sure, so part of the previous funding was characterizing and cataloging disease symptoms and matching them to one or more viruses. So it's it, these viruses uh, can co-infect. So there's multiple infections that can occur, up to six viruses can co-infect one ginger. And so we, we have developed uh, um, a catalog and we've distributed that and, and had field days and seminars so people understand the potential viruses that they have based off their symptoms. More work needs to be done there, but we have that somewhat mature at this point. Yes, yeah, so is there um, a remedy or a solution that um, people who have ginger plants sure. would be able that to use? That's the pernicious nature of viruses in plants. You can't cure a plant of a virus, or at least we haven't done so successfully um, um, in many recorded cases. There aren't really virucides to use. And that's why when it comes to virus plants, if you, the only solution is to eliminate the current plant that's virus and replant with virus-free plants. Um, and this is the case for pretty much every, every major virus that we deal with um, in, in crop production. But how do we recognize that there's a virus? Does the plant uh, turn black or what? There, well, there's a, a long list of, of symptoms that can occur, but the most common one is striping in the leaves. It's somewhat indicative of, and it looks like chlorotic streaking. And we actually have a, a small catalog of, of what that looks like. And it can be anywhere from, from that simple of a symptom all the way down to full plant death um, or, or the leaves look crinkly, bleached. Um, so there are there are ways to determine it uh, visually, and, but and it's important to also do testing in a laboratory, and that's kind of where it gets expensive. Well, yeah, but I'm guessing that most homeowners who just do this casually for ornamental plants in their yard do not know that. So you know, we could have virus plants that we're not aware of because none of that information is out in the public. So, Chair, Vice Chair, if I can actually comment on that. So that's where the beauty of extension comes. So we actually have produced extension publication that is available to public. So if they wanted to look at it, this is uh, available. And I will be happy to provide you with a copy if you have any. Yeah, well, that's my point, is if we don't know that it exists, mm -hmm. we're not looking for it. Yeah. Yeah. 
like when we had the fire ants, the Department of Ag, mm -hmm. you know, went public. And so we were able to identify in Mililani and mm -hmm. get rid of it quickly, but this is the first I'm hearing of, of this fire. So I'm just concerned that we're not aware. Thank you. Thank sure. you. Uh, oh, go ahead. So, um, Anna, and so we were just in South Carolina and we had toured their facility on different research and viruses and pathogens. The interaction we had with them and their extension mm -hmm. agents was that they work with you guys here in Hawaii and that they also do the same type of research. So where's that research that they've done and it's not just on um, bananas and, and stuff, but they also had like sweet potatoes, um, ornamentals. So in fact, I think I have one of the contacts of them, but they have been doing work for you guys as well in their research. So are we overlapping? And, you know, if they're doing it, why, why should we be also doing it here? You guys coming out with the same result. This is a, a this is a great question. So, uh, CDAR faculty works with collaboration across uh, nation and internationally to address big issues. So, for example, issue like this, especially related to viruses, are uh, very com complicated, and just uh, it takes a long time to to come out with the answer. So we. Uh, collaborating with other researchers, we share the information, we attend the conferences and so on. So I would say the more people work on it, the better chance we have to find the answers. Yeah, well, you, you know, because if, if I took a, um, if I took a plant and I said, okay, I need an identification, mm -hmm. which I did to UH here on Oahu, mm -hmm. it took me six weeks to get a response back. I just sent one into South Carolina and it took me 48 hours. Yes, I recognize the issue and we are working on improving our diagnostic service lab. Uh, I, have a, I have been an interim dean for six months and it's something that I'm looking into it. So yes, thank you for that and we will do best. To... This has been going on for years, you know, and it, it's really hard to swallow because mm -hmm. I take the same soil sample and mm -hmm. send it to California and get a response back in 24 hours. <laughs> It takes here eight weeks to get back that response, but then the crop is completely yeah. wiped out. That's a that's really uh, kind of heartbreaking, and the reason why, why yeah, it. what is heartbreaking is that our facility, diagnostic facility, have been neglected for the decades. So we have hired the new director or the new person to run the facilities, and he identified that some of our equipment is like 30, 40 years old. With the diagnosis of things like soil and viruses, you really need to have a brain. I new... guess my question is, do we just send it out of state to have it diagnosed for, uh -huh. for farmers and ranchers here? Or do That's... we continue to fund research here since we can seem to move it across mm -hmm. faster and get the results to help these mm -hmm. farms identify pests and then target the management practices? Uh... The, the, this is an interesting question, right? So when you're talking about uh, sending samples out of the state for identification, uh, we are actually looking, you know, as we're reviving our new diagnostic laboratory, we're actually looking at uh, what, what can we do here with the funds that we have, what we can do with the faculty that we have here, and which of these uh, diagnoses might be better served, uh, you know, than a, on the mainland. The one uh, thing that we actually are uh, discussing, which I'm very excited about, is especially when it comes to diagnosis into the soil, is that in the past we were just providing the results, but now uh, one of the things that I kind of brought up and the, the person that we have uh, running the lab agrees is that we not only need to provide the uh, the results, but we also have to explain what that means and what steps need to be done first. So not only the provide diagnosis or say, okay, this is a problem, but provide the solutions how to how to uh, change that problem. Yeah. yeah, and I think that's what we're getting right now. Is we, we're having to have those results faster, and then what is the remedy? Yeah. So mm -hmm. they literally come back and they said, here's the treatment. Mm -hmm. Either you leave that land fallow clean it up, mm -hmm. you know, move to another area, put down a cover crop or something that will literally be a bumper mm -hmm. crop versus trying to combat it with some mm -hmm. kind of pesticide and stuff. So I just looking at an overlap that takes us six weeks here 
versus I can get something back within 24 to 48 hours because, I mean, you, you got to look at the whole situation mm -hmm. here. By the time you just come to a result, that crop is completely gone. So why, what I'm saying is why fund research here if I can mm -hmm. get research done across the U.S. in 24 to 48 hours? Yeah, so I, I, I think that uh, what I think is important to, to kind of remember that is the difference uh, between the doing the research and finding the solutions to the problems like you heard about Ginger, no one else have been worked on, on well, that. The whole part is that they gave me the solution. Yes, gave yes, me the solution on how to treat, treat whether it was yeah. white fly, whether it was weevil, mm -hmm. and then the latest to come to Hawaii, which I'm sure you guys don't even have it yet, is mm -hmm. on grub. Yes, which so, I, I plan on bringing a grub to you guys and mm -hmm. see how fast you guys can tell me what the yeah. treatment and remedy but, so, so, but that's okay, Anna. We can have this for Yes, later. I'm so, looking but forward. Thank you, yes, thank you for your comments and I'm looking forward for the conversation and I'm sure yeah, we can yeah. come with a solution. Okay. One more question. Okay. So, or maybe a, a request. So Anna, can you can the department provide us the committee with the list of how many staff do you have in diagnosis that are doing diagnosis and your labs and you mm -hmm. know we want to see what's the level that you're that you're actually staffing this yes. and what is it costing us and if the turnaround is six weeks or longer um, you know that's something that we should be considering. Mm -hmm. That's a, um, I would be happy to do that, as I mentioned to, to, to the senator, that uh, our laboratory was really outdated and we are right. investing. And, right, and what is the cost to yes. then update it? And even if you update it, is it going to be a quicker turnaround? Is it going to be a 24-hour, 48-hour turnaround? Because I find that a lot of state services, mm -hmm. you can't even get a birth certificate copied. Um, it takes you six months to get that. Mm -hmm. So it worries me that these services aren't being mm -hmm. provided on a timely basis. Yes, I understand your concern. And the, uh, I, 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 one of the problems with the turnaround is that we just don't have enough staff. Right now, uh, we have uh, only two people in an, maybe three, well, but I can't give I'm it. Asking, yes. what is, how many do we have? Yes. And how many would we need to have a quick turnaround? That's, and maybe that investment, mm -hmm. if someone else can do it mm -hmm. quicker, and cheaper than for us to then hire 10 more people <coughs> and fringe benefits and so mm -hmm. forth. It would be simpler that we do send mm -hmm. it away. Yes, I, and, and we are actually looking at that as a CETA administration or how best uh, And take that funding this. that we're going to use for that and put it in something else, right? Well, this one is specifically to do research on, on, on ginger. I understand, but there is a concern raised. So. Yes, and thank you for bringing your concern. Okay, thank you. Moving on to uh, the next measure, SB 648, relating to aquaculture, requires UH in consultation with the Department of Ag to establish and administer an aquaculture disease diagnostic laboratory, appropriates funds for the lab, and establishes and appropriates funds for an aquaculture veterinarian position within the Department of Ag. First up is the Attorney General. Again, the Department of Police Attorney General would just like to um, indicate to uh, recommend that the language of the matters of statewide concern be inserted into the language of the bill. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Next is uh, UH. Aloha chairs, vice chairs, rest of the committee, Anya Vyacharek here, uh, interim dean for CITAR. Uh, thank you for providing this uh, opportunity to testify on this bill. Uh, we are in support of intent, but however, we cannot, uh, we are concerned with the way that the bill is written. I would like to provide some suggestions. So right now, Department of Agriculture already has the um, di disease diagnostic laboratory. Uh, and that is mostly concentrating on the livestock and poultry and some aquaculture. Uh, CTAR has established the testing laboratory that specifically concentrates on test, uh, PCR testing uh, and is specifically uh, related to aquaculture. Uh, we really believe that the best way to uh, address uh, industry needs to actually establish aquaculture di disease diagnostic program within uh, Department of Agriculture with the existing laboratory. And on, we will defer to the uh, HDOA uh, related to the amount of funding that they would need to do so. Uh, thank you so for, thank you for uh, 
allow me to step aside in support of the intent, but we cannot support passage of this bill as is written. Thank you very much. Thank you. Department of Ag. Good afternoon, Chair Gabbard, Chair Kim, Todd Love with the Department of Agriculture. We stand on our written testimony in support with amendments that um, dovetail with what was just said by the University of Hawaii. Thank you. Thank you. Hawaii Farm Bureau in support. Uh, the Local Food Coalition, Kendall Matsuyoshi. Good afternoon, Chair Gabbard, Chair Kim, Vice Chair Kidani, members of the committee, Kendall Matsuyoshi, on behalf of the Local Food Coalition. Um, we stand in support of this bill and are in agreement with the Department of Agriculture and CTAR to move the lab uh, to the Department of Agriculture. And we also support um, clarifying in Section 2 that the funds can be used for the day-to-day -day support of the aquaculture industry as a whole. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to testify on this measure? SB 648. Members, any questions? So if the funding is shifted to DOA, do we still need the amendment you suggested or not? If if this the funding is shifted, but the requirements are still on Palm Beach to do what's indicated in the bill, then you would need But to they're still are agreeing to do it voluntarily. I assume like they're eager to do it. We're not requiring them to do it. Oh, uh, I guess I took the language literally in the bill. No, but I, I think the, the amendments that everyone's requesting, though, is that CTAR would be consulting with them, but not necessarily, they would be running the, the lab that's being proposed. Okay, I'm sorry. I guess I would have to see the, the, um, the amended language before I could indicate. But if it's not gonna, if it's gonna take a requirement, the requirements off of the age, then you're correct. You would not need that language. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I also have a question for the Department of Ag or for UH. But so this bill is establishing and administering aquaculture disease diagnostic laboratory. So what is it? Well, why wouldn't we want to put a diagnostic laboratory for the previous bill in 646? Sorry, uh, can you repeat the question? Yeah, this bill, well, I think you were opposed to this bill, right? 648? Uh, yes, I support the yes. intent, but I oppose the way that it's written, yes. Okay, so whoever supports moving or putting or administering and establishing an aquaculture disease diagnostic laboratory why isn't we also moving or putting the diagnostic laboratory for plants or gingers or like in the previous bill and so that <coughs> you know, senator decoit brought up that the house cannot get these um yes so uh so diagnostics uh when it comes to plants animals and and uh, in, in diseases in plants and animals but a different kind of diagnostics that needs to be done so not every diagnostics that for example is uh on on viruses on ginger can be addressed in the laboratory that deals with uh, diseases on animals uh so uh, alpha culture can't be sorry Aquaculture yes. can't be in the same laboratory as it's just different testing. So there are lots of different just like when you have a test for flu or test for this for that, there are different tests that need to be done and different equipment that needs to be bought for that. So, so every different kind of test requires a diagnostic laboratory. No, 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 not I that not absolutely no, I'm not. not. Trying to ask yes, I yes yeah, no, no, uh, absolutely not, but they kind of have to be in the same area. So uh, if you do diagnostic on human diseases or, or things, you need the one kind of a lab with a different regulations and so on. If you're trying to do diagnostics on the uh, animal diseases and so on, it, it's, uh, I am not that extremely familiar with all the testing, but I just know that uh, so all the different expertise. Food or, or fish or anything can be done under aquaculture diagnostic laboratory. 
Yes, so what happens is that right now HDOA already has a that laboratory that, that deals with uh, livestock and poultry and see aquaculture falls, falls into the same bucket, right? So they could, so right now UH is doing PCR testing, which is a one kind of testing specifically on shrimp and, and so on. And uh, we're not able to sustain it anymore. And we're just thinking that it's better if it goes to the Department of Ag and we're looking to, towards collaboration, working with them on it. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, Department of Ag. So would the lab be exclusively under the use and the purview of Department of Ag or would there be access for aquaculture industry leaders? Uh, thanks for the question, Chair. Um, hmm. Well, there's two levels to that. First of all, it would be available for the other livestock sectors. So like the beef cattle, uh, beef, pork, and poultry. Um, we already provide services out to the industry. So I believe that would continue. Um, what we're adding is a, is a different kind of testing, this PCR testing. And again, I'm not the scientist, so I'm, uh, uh, but that's just another tool in the, in the laboratory tool belt. Mm -hmm. So I believe that that outreach would continue. Okay, thank you. Yes. All right, moving on to uh, SB 663, appropriating funds for the establishment of an agriculture education coordinator position within UH at Manoa College of Tropical Ag and Human Resources. First up is Department of Ag. Thank you, Chairs. The department stands on its written testimony and support. Second is uh, Anna Kirk with CTAR. Aloha Chair, Vice Chair Anya Vyachorik, <clears throat> Interim Dean for College of Tropical Agriculture and Human Resources. Thank you for providing me opportunity to testify in the strong support of this bill. Uh, we all know that we are working on increasing the food production here in Hawaii. Uh, and one of the way to do this is to bring more farmers and uh, kind of grow our own, as I say. Uh, and the only way we can do this is if we can work together across the state in uh, all the efforts. And in 2017, uh, CTOR has uh, convened the group, the working group of uh, all the parties that are involved in the K-12 and, and P K-12 plus college uh, education when it goes, when it comes to this. And one of the strongest recommendations that came out from that working group was that we do hire the coordinator that is going to work together uh, with our stakeholders, with our uh, with rest of the people who are involved in the ARC education. So I have been involved in the actually K-12 education as a faculty for many years. I'm very passionate about it. I think most students, uh, young students we educate, better will be when it comes to growing our own farmers. So for that reason, I strongly support this bill as long as it does not have a negative impact of approved Board of Region budget for UH. Uh, thank you for opportunity to testify and I'm here to answer any questions. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to testify on 663, SB 663? We have five in support, zero opposed. Members, any questions? Um, yeah. Specific, oh, uh, this coordinator will do what again? I know you said coordinate, but coordinate UH, UH egg programs with the schools or? No, so uh, let me clarify that. So there are a number of programs, uh, state programs like within Department of uh, Education or uh, toward, in towards CTAR, or many programs actually run by no profit organizations and that they are working on uh, educating our K-12 uh, students when it comes to agriculture and importance of food. So the idea that this position, the idea of this position is that this person is going to work across the, not only UH and state system, but working with our partners, community leaders, to make sure that the curriculum or information that we provide to the students is more or less the same, but also to make sure that we don't overlap. So just a great example how we could overlap. I have developed the curriculum 
uh, to teach uh, young children uh, how to grow the seeds and I already put my efforts and so on into it. If we have somebody who is coordinating that and knows that, for example, someone in Wahiwa would like to teach the students to do so, then they will know that I have that uh, curriculum and develop and we can share it. So I really believe that working together, we can really uh, make okay. this happen. I just want to make sure that the, that the position is you know, articulated as mm -hmm. to what are the goals, what are the outcomes that we're going to get and not just of have course. someone there kind of floating around. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Next is uh, Nicole Galassi with the Hawaii Cattlemen's Council. Wait a minute, are we on 663? Mm, no, we're on 1488, right? Okay, I was looking up there. That's okay, I'm confused. Nicole Galassi, Zoom is in support. Not present on Zoom chair. Thank you. Inga Gibson with the Animal Welfare Institute. Now, good afternoon, Chair Gabbard, Chair Kim. Thanks so much for the opportunity. Inga Gibson on behalf of the Animal Welfare Institute in support. I just wanted to mention that this measure came out of um, recent rural uh, process um, that we worked with with the Department of Agriculture and the industry. Mahalo Chair Gabbard for your assistance with that a few years ago. Um, during that real process, um, our veterinarians had recommended um, that shade and water be provided to the cattle uh, during their ocean transport trips um, between islands and also to the mainland. As many of you know, thousands of cattle um, are shipped um, from Hawaii to the mainland and also uh, a lesser number inter-island. So unfortunately, Department of Agriculture uh, pointed out that at that time, they didn't feel that they had the data to adopt um, the shade and water requirements for those those trips uh, extending 24 hours um, and that they wanted to conduct this heat stress study. So in strong support and hopefully uh, the findings will benefit not only our local cattle here in the cattle industry, but also uh, be a benefit to um, other uh, cattle and um, animal welfare concerns um, in other areas where cattle are also shipped via ocean transport vessels. So mahalo for the opportunity. Thank you, Inga. Anyone else uh, wanting to testify on 1488? Please, huh? Aloha Chair, Vice Chair, rest of the committee, Anja Wieczorek, uh, Interim Dean for CTAR. Uh, I would like to uh, support the bill SB 1488. As the previous uh, council mentioned, this topic came out during the Board of Agriculture meeting. The last time that we talked about it was in the fall. There were concerns from the uh, some of the groups that the welfare of animals uh, might be affected by the shipment. And so, uh, for that reason, uh, we are supporting the, this, uh, this bill. Uh, we have expertise in the college that would allow us to continue to, to do this study. So uh, uh, thank you for allowing me to provide testimony in support of this bill. Thank you. Thank you. Anna. Anyone else? with respect to 1488 mm -hmm. and then statewide concern language. Okay. Members, any questions? Quick question, uh, Chair. Yes. Sitar. So ha have we lost any animals suffering from heat stress during inter-island ocean transport? Uh, not that I'm aware of, but again, um, I this is not area my area of expertise. Uh, I don't know if we have, uh, maybe the Cattle Association can ask and answer that. I do, I am not, not that I'm aware of, here we go. Yeah, me neither. So, yeah. um, what do we hope to find out from this study? So, the study is to uh, actually look at the effect of the heat stress on, on the livestock and at what point of what kind of temperatures, for example, would need to be reached for the animal to be a uh, welfare animal welfare to be uh, affected? So the idea is to 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 look at it. Uh, what kind of temperatures uh, would need to be reached in the containers, shipping containers, or on the way when they wait to be shipped to to have a negative impact on the welfare? Yeah, it just kind of shock us in all the years that we've been moving cattle. Mm -hmm. I never saw any of them yet under heat stress. 
Okay, thank you. Thank you, Chair. So what precipitated this? Yeah. So I have been in this position for six months, but as an interim dean for CETAR, I sit on the, the Board of Agriculture. Uh, and I, the, when I heard the first time about this concern, it was during the time uh, when the Board of Agriculture, uh, there were concerns brought to the Board of Agriculture by a number of concern uh, organizations and they would like right, but to look I, at that. But they should show us some data that yeah. warrants us spending this kind of money for this study. I'm not aware of. I, I am not. I think that there is no uh, data available, at least for the state of Hawaii. And we will uh, we will be happy to conduct the study if uh, if it's if you if the committees think that is necessary. Well, what if we don't fund it? Are you still going to conduct the study? Uh, that would that our faculty uh, uh, is the one who actually looks for the external funding to any kind of research that they want to do. So if if the faculty, if our livestock faculty believes that this is the issue, they would probably seek the external funding to to support that. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, we'll take a quick uh, recess with the decision making. All back together, the Joint Committee on Higher Education and Agriculture and the Environment for decision making. The chairs have uh, discussed this and the recommendation for the first bill, Senate Bill 1586, relating to the University of Hawaii College of Tropical Agriculture, where we will uh, establish five full time equivalent positions. The recommendation is to pass as is. Any discussion, members? Hearing none, um, Vice Chair, the Chair will side. Senate Bill 1586 to pass unamended chair votes aye. Vice chair votes aye. Senator Fukunaga excuse. Senator Kibagaran. Yes. Senator Fabella excuse. Measures adopted, Madam Chair. Thank you. Same recommendation for AEN. Any discussion? Chair votes aye. Senator DeCoit. Uh, Vice chair excuse. Senator DeCoit votes aye. Senator Rhodes. Aye. Senator Awa. Aye. Chair, your recommendation passes. Thank you, members. Moving on to SB 285, need to do with wastewater systems. The chair's recommendation um, will be to pass with amendments that were made by the Department of Health, and specifically on page six, line seven, um, deleting waste management solution and cesspool and then adding the word wastewater there in page 6 line 10 and 11 deleting the words and cesspool and also cesspool add, implement those technologies in cesspool delete that and then add wastewater the word wastewater page 7 line 5 Deleting the word ancestral. Page seven, line 11. Deleting the word cesspool and adding the word wastewater. And page eight, line two. Deleting the word cesspool and adding wastewater. And page eight, line 12. Deleting cesspool and adding wastewater. Page nine, line six. Deleting waste management and cesspool and adding the word wastewater. Any discussion? Chair votes side. Senator Coit. Members voting on SB 285 with amendments. Chair's recommendation is to pass. Chair votes aye. Senator Richards excuse. Senator Coit votes aye. Senator Rose. Aye. Senator Awang. Aye. Chair recommendation is adopted. Thank you, members. For, chair, uh, for the decision for um, higher education, same recommendation. Uh, pass with amendments. 
Chair votes aye. Senate Bill 285 for higher ed, Chair votes aye, Vice Chair votes aye. Senator Agaron. Aye. Measures adopted, Madam Chair. Thank you. Next measure is SB 518 relating to aquaculture. Uh, UH Sea Grant Program and five year plan. Uh, the chair's recommendation would be to pass with an amendment that was uh, given by the AG's office that this would be a law of statewide concern. Any discussion? Chair votes aye. Brady again. Members voting on SB 518. Chair's recommendation is passed with amendments, recognizing all members here with the, with the excuse uh, member of. Uh, Senator Richards, any nays? Seeing none, Chair, your recommendation is adopted. Thank you, members. For Committee on Higher Education, the same recommendation is passed Senate Bill 518 with amendments. Okay. Any discussion, members? If not, Chair votes aye. Chair votes aye. Vice Chair votes aye. Senator Agaron. Aye. Measures adopted, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you. SB 646 relating to ornamental ginger and pathogens. The Chair's recommendation would be to pass as is. Any discussion? Chair votes aye. Senator DeCoy. Members voting on SB 646. Pat. Recommendation to pass on amended. Recognizing all members here with the excuse of Senator Richards. Any needs? No vote. No vote for Senator Owa. Chair, your recommendation is adopted. Thank you, members. Same recommendation for Committee on Higher Education. Um, any discussion, members? If not, chair votes aye. For Senate Bill 646 to pass with amendments? Yes. Pass with amendments. Chair votes aye. Vice Chair votes aye. Senator Agra. Measures adopted, Madam Chair. Thank you. Oh. Next one. Oh, I'm sorry. Was as is? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm a mistake. So. Yeah, as is. Senate Bill six four six. Yeah. So we want to take a re take the vote for <clears throat> yeah. Senator um, for one. Senate Bill six four six for uh, higher ed recommendation with the chair to pass unamended. Yes, unamended. Yeah. Yeah. Chair voted aye. Vice Chair voted aye. Senator Keith Agaron. Yes. And she's adopted, Madam Chair. Thank you. Next is SB six forty eight relating to aquaculture. Uh, the chair's recommendation will be to pass with amendments. The first uh, uh, recommended by Department of Ag will replace UH CTAR with the Department of Ag as the recipient of the appropriation, establish the proposed lab in the state veterinary lab building in the Department of Ag Animal Industry Division Veterinary Lab Services Branch. Also add two additional full-time equivalent microbiologists, three SR20 positions, and also we'll add the amendment that was suggested by the AG's office as a matter of statewide concern. Any discussion members? Chair votes aye. Senator sure. DeCoy. Members, uh, Chair's recommendation is to pass with amendments recognizing all members here with the excuse of Senator Richards in reservations or needs. No vote. No vote for Senator Law. Chair, your recommendation is adopted. Thank you, members. Same recommendations, the Committee on Higher Education to pass out uh, Senate Bill 648 with amendments. Senate Bill 648 with amendments. Chair votes aye. aye. Vice Chair votes aye. Senator Agaran. Yes. Issues adopted, Madam Thank Chair. You. Moving on to SB 663. 663. Relating to the uh, UH Ag Education Coordinator. The uh, chair's recommendation uh, will be to pass unamended. Any discussion? Chair votes aye. Senator DeCoy. Member is voting on Senate Bill 663. Chair's recommendation pass uh, unamended, recognizing all members here with the excuse of Senator Richards. Any reservations or nays? No vote. No vote for Senator Watt. Chair recommendation is adopted. Thank you, members. <coughs> for uh, Committee on Higher Education, same recommendation to pass as is Senate Bill 663. Chair votes. Aye. Chair, Chair votes aye. Vice Chair votes aye. Senator Keith yes. Agaron. Measures adopted, Madam Chair. Thank you. And the final measure on the uh, 307 agenda is SB 1488 relating to livestock. 
the uh, chair's recommendation will, will be to amend uh, this measure. We'll add the AG's concern, uh, statewide concern. Uh, we'll also take out the funding on page three, section three, and that we'll put in the committee report that the is in the testi a testimony that the researchers can get external grants to fund this. Could could get was, external grants? Yes. Thought it was meritorious to extend. Any discussion? Chair votes aye. Members voting on SB 1488 with amendments. Chair's recommendation is to pass, uh, recognizing the excuse of Senator Richards. Any reservations or needs? No vote. No vote for Senator Wong. Chair recommendation is adopted. Thank you, members. For the same recommendation for higher education to amend Senate Bill 14, 1488. Chair votes aye. Chair votes aye. Vice Chair votes aye. Senator Agaron. Yes. Measures adopted, Madam Chair. Thank you, members. Thank you. Higher education, we have two more items on the 305 agenda. Hopefully it'll be quick because we are running out of time. So, IT, can you count us down? Thank you. Uh, we call to order the uh, Higher Education Committee at the 305 agenda. Today is Tuesday, February 14. We're in room 229. Uh, the first item is Senate Bill 547, SD1. This relates to the Board of Regents, requires the University of Hawaii Board of Regents to approve by majority vote any designee selected to serve or participate uh, for the chairperson as a voting or non-voting member of any legislative established board commission or working group or task force. Uh, we have one testifier with comments, Jamie Bow from the University of Hawaii Board of Regents. Basically, she said they have not met to even discuss this measure. So there's no anyone else wishing to testify on this measure? Hearing none, members, any discussion? Not. We'll move on to Senate Bill 155 relating to the University of Hawaii establishes and appropriates fund, funds for a network improvement community task force to develop K-12 science, technology, engineer, mathematics, teacher education degree for the University of Hawaii and report to the legislature. Appropriates funds for the establishment of this um, program and appropriates funds in the University of Hawaii Maui College Office of International and Regional Partnerships for Study Abroad Programs. Uh, we have Keith Hayashi testifying for the Department of Education, anyone from DOE? Not uh, Della Teraoka testifying for the University of Hawaii in support. Welcome. Yes, we, uh, I'm representing the two colleges and we stand on our legislative support. Thank you very much. Uh, anyone else wishing to testify on this measure? Hearing none, final item on the agenda. Oh no, that's it, right? We did 15, we did 1586. Yeah, that was 155. Well, we did already um, 157. Yeah, we did 1586. My full time position. Okay, any, any other discussion? Um, hearing that, I'll go right into decision making. Uh, members uh, for the first item, Senate Bill 547. Again, this is relating to the Board of Regents. Um, this is a situation where many times it's designated that the chair of the Board of Regents will in fact represent the Regents uh, on these boards. And if he can't, then he will do a designee. And there were some concerns raised that the chair doesn't consult the board necessarily on who that designee might be. And so this would just uh, make it where he would discuss it with the board and they would agree or disagree with the decision. Um, so the recommendation is to believe, pass as is. Any discussion? Hearing none? Vice Chair, Chair votes aye. 
Senate Bill 547SD1 to pass unamended. Chair votes aye, Vice Chair votes aye, Senator Fukunaga excused. Senator Algaran? Yes. And Senator Favela excused. Measures adopted. Thank you. And for Senate Bill 155, this is uh, for the Community Task Force to develop a K-12 um, technology program and for the University of Hawaii Maui College of International and Regional Partnerships for Study Abroad Programs. Any discussion, members? Um, hearing none, recommendation is to pass as is. Uh, the chair votes aye. Senate Bill 155, pass unamended. Chair votes aye. Vice Chair votes aye. Senator Keith Algaran. Aye. Which was adopted. Thank you. And we are done at 4.30. Thank you.